something to say about this kind of hardship? Just a little. All right, at five o'clock, we'll go ahead and call the meeting to order. We can please start with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, and welcome. I uh, do want to, uh, the purpose of this meeting is for the board to conduct board business. The meeting is open to the public and is recorded. You can listen to all past board meetings by visiting board docs through the district website. And this meeting is also being presented via Zoom. I do want to remind you that it's not appropriate for audience members to interrupt board business or ask questions during the meeting. Agenda items will be listed in the agenda. And in case of emergency, please exit the room using the exit closest to you. And Director Halverson, would you care to read our vision and mission statements? Yeah. Our vision, our community inspires and prepares each student to thrive. And our mission, in connection with our community, the Squim School District empowers staff to inspire hope and provide flexible, innovative learning opportunities in a safe and respectful environment so each student thrives. Thank you. Director Jeffries, would you share our land acknowledgement, please, if you don't mind? Okay. We acknowledge the land we stand on. The Squim School District administrative and school buildings sit on the ancestral land of the Sklalem people. While Sklalem traditionally comes from one nation, history has led to the formation of three sovereign, sovereign Sklalem, Sklalem tribes, tribal governments, the Lower Elwok Sklalem tribe, located in Port Angeles, Washington, Jamestown Sklalem tribe, located in Squim, Washington, and Port Gamble Sklalem tribe, located in Kingston, Washington. The district's primary partnership is with the Jamestown Sklalem tribe. Today, the tribe and the district share partnerships that includes official consultation on program and funding changes that may have directly affect American Indian and Alaska Native students, as well as holistic service planning for students to remain successful in their educational journeys. Thank you very much. And that's going to take us to 3.01. Um, recognition of our Teacher Appreciation Week, which I believe the first day is today, so. So that is true. Today is our first day of uh, Teacher Appreciation Week, and I will let you know that uh, we have different activities going on in buildings, and we certainly want to express our appreciation for all that teachers do in our district. Um, to that end, we do have a proclamation to read tonight from Governor Inslee, and I'd like to go ahead and share that. I think many of the sentiments in this are ones that we share and more. Whereas a strong, effective system of free public school education for all children and youth is essential to our democratic system of government, and whereas the United States has made considerable progress in the social, technological, and scientific fields due to our system of free and universal public education, and whereas much of this progress can be attributed to the qualified and dedicated teachers entrusted with the educational development of our children, and whereas teachers provide opportunities for students to connect with the world around them, develop basic skills for success in life and work, experience the realization of high expectations and the fulfillment of steps toward achievable goals. And whereas teachers should be accorded high public esteem, reflecting the value placed on their skills and abilities and the importance of public education. And whereas it is appropriate that teachers be recognized for their dedication 
and commitment to educating their students. Now, therefore, I, J. Inslee, Governor of the State of Washington, do hereby proclaim May 6th through the 10th of 2024 as Teacher Appreciation Week and May 7th, 2024 as Teacher Appreciation Day in Washington. And I encourage all people in our state to join me in this special observance. Governor Jay Inslee. Mm -hmm. And with that, I just um, can't say enough about the momentum our school district is experiencing um, moving students forward. You know, this is the time of year, springtime, when so much is culminated. And it is in part to teachers thinking ahead about what students need and then providing it for them and look where the success has landed us. So um, I can't say enough to our teachers and thanks. All right. That's gonna bring us to 3.02 and that's gonna be recognition of May 8th, which is going to be our, um, is that National School Nurse Day. Um, and we have a proclamation regarding um, School Nurse Day. Whereas students are the future and by investing in them today, we are ensuring our world for tomorrow. And whereas families deserve to feel confident that their children will be cared for when they are at school. And whereas all students have the right to have their physical and mental health needs safely met while in the school setting. And whereas Students today face more complex and life-threatening health problems requiring care in school. And whereas school nurses have served a critical role in improving public health and ensuring students' academic success for more than 120 years. And whereas school nurses address the home and community factors, social detriments that impact students' health. And whereas school nurses are professional nurses that advance the well-being, academic success, and lifelong achievements of all students by serving on the front line and providing a critical safety net for our nation's most fragile children. And whereas school nurses act as a liaison to the school community, families, and healthcare providers on behalf of children's health by promoting wellness and improving health outcomes for our nation's children, and whereas school nurses support the health and educational success of children and youth by providing access to care when children's cognitive development is at its peak. And whereas school nurses are members of school-based teams, uh, which includes the School Health Services, 504, IEP, Disaster and Emergency Planning teams, uh, provide care coordination for to address the school population and whereas school nurses understand the link between health and learning and are in a position to make a positive difference for children every day. Therefore, be it resolved that the National Association of School Nurses celebrates and acknowledges the accomplishments of school nurses everywhere and their efforts to meet the needs of today's students by providing and advocating for quality student-centered care and offers gratitude for the nation's school nurses who contribute to our local communities by supporting students to stay healthy in school, safe and ready to learn, and keeping parents and guardians at work, not just on this National School Nurses Day, but in every opportunity throughout the year. Now, therefore, I, Superintendent Regan Nichols, do hereby proclaim Wednesday, May 8th, 2024 as School Nurse Day in Squim, Washington, and commend its observance to all citizens. So, all right. And once well, that's, again, that's yes. official yes. by Regan Nichols. Um, I think we can't say enough. Coming out of COVID, uh, school nurses helped schools literally navigate through figuring out systems that could keep students um, working, able to come to school eventually, and um, now it's us looking back at what we've learned there and keeping those things alive that made our schools better, safer places. And so they hold the torch for that. And also on our safety teams, I'd want you to know our school nurse, uh, Sonia Bittner, is a key participant. Um, she really does guide so much of what we consider, and we appreciate that very much. All right. All right, and that's going to take us to 
Can I get that to you? Okay, so coming up on Friday, May 10th, this is a busy week, is uh, National School Communicators Day. And uh, in this uh, realm, we would like to recognize the incredible, valuable work of school public relations professionals. And in our district, we are fortunate to have Megan Like, who works tirelessly to ensure transparent and effective communication about district planning decisions, and priorities to students, families, staff, and our community. As we all well know, communication with stakeholders over the last two years has been more important than ever, and we'd all like to take the opportunity to thank Megan for her commitment to telling the story of our school district and our students day in, day out, and for serving as a strategic partner to district leadership and for our administrative team and for always working to amplify our message and works so well with the secretarial team as well. There's a lot of back and forth that goes on. So please join me in wishing Megan a happy School Communicators Day coming up on Friday. <laughs> awesome. All right. And with that, that's going to take us to the approval of our minutes, the approval of our agenda, and the approval of our consent agenda. I do have um, one addition that does need to be added to the agenda, um, which is going to be a contingent contract approval for stadium, the stadium lighting project in regard to uh, resolution number 909. And so um, that would be another agenda item that we would be adding. So um, with that amended agenda item, is there, and obviously we'll get details on that when we get to that agenda item, uh, but with that amended, um, do we have any objection to the approval of our minutes, uh, consent agenda and consent agenda? Agenda as amended. Hearing none, we will consider those approved. And that's going to bring us to public comments. If you are attending the meeting via Zoom, and would like to make public comments, you can do so by using the raise hand feature um, within Zoom, which should be at the bottom of your screen. Go ahead and indicate that by doing the raise hand feature now, and I we will go ahead and uh, put you in the queue. All right, nothing virtual? No, okay. And we do not have anybody signed up uh, for a live public comment. So without objection, we will go ahead and keep on going with the agenda. All right. Student board, we do not have our- We've, we've received word that uh, they aren't able to make it tonight. Okay, all right, no problem understand the uh the, the busy lives of uh high schoolers <laughs> especially this time of year so <laughs> and ap testing today yeah yes Ooh, okay yeah all right and that's going to move us to our uh reports to the board why don't we go ahead and start with our 9.01 communication report Testing. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you. Um, and thank you, directors and Superintendent Nichols for having me today. All right. So communications out of my office. Um, in alignment with the Washington School Board standards, I was tasked to go through um, our communication pathways and review them this year. And not just review them, but pivot them if needed. And so I'm going to take you on a little bit of a journey about what a day in the life of me and maybe in a year of me. 
So let's go to the first slide. In my office, uh, I am tasked with lots of things. Um, and primarily these are the items, public and media relations, liaison for community groups, brand management, content writing, website management, social media, district magazine, graphic design, and volunteer coordinator. These are just some of the things I get to do that I enjoy doing, and uh, especially when I get to work with people. If you haven't been to my office, I am by myself, so I do like being with people. So if you call, I would love that. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna look at what structure we bring to some of the communications that go out. Um, these are communications, I would say, on the regular that we get uh, questions about, like, hey, where do you put these items? So let's look at this chart right here. We have different types. So we have our emergency alert. So if you get like a emergency text or if something is happening, that is an emergency. You're gonna see right across, if you go straight across, where we put those. You're gonna to go to the next one, school closing. We we do that everywhere. We put it everywhere because we want everyone to know about it right away. The next one is event information. We put it in some, some areas. General information, again, some areas. And then our newsletter and district magazine, um, we put it in a lot of areas. We don't do text alert. If you've noticed that that second column there is really only for emergency and um, immediate things that we need to put out. So mostly that is what we do on the regular, unless there is something that is asked for, can we put this um, in the paper? And of course the answer is always yes. All right, our website, <clears throat> this is what we've heard. And when I say community, this is kind of the areas in which we heard them. Our, we had a listening tour last year. Last year we heard a lot about how we were communicating, where we were communicating, and how people were gaining information. And one of the big items is our website and being able to find things, being able to see where things are located. If you see on the left, you see what our community has said, you'll see on the right what our staff has said. And the staff that we, we spoke with are our admin and our office staff who manage the website for their building specifically. I do help with all of them. Primarily, I am in charge of the district website. And in the middle, you'll see three things that I think really narrow down what I'm going to get to. Outdated, hard to navigate, and we need a new layout. These were the things that we heard over and over and over again. And we've been working tirelessly to um, communicate the best we can with what we have. Our website is about eight years old. And if you think about your cell phone, your cell phones are probably eight years old. Communication and, and electronics, they change very quickly. And um, ours, as, as beautiful as it is, could, could work better. And so coming soon to a website near you, we have a new website template. We are calling it a skin because that's really what it's called. It's going to be a new face for our district. And um, this is at no cost. This is a refresh that we are getting with our um, school messenger, which is our platform that we use. The platform has been sold to another company. And so it's been about a year in the coming to get to this point. Uh, we started the conversation last February and they were in the middle of, as you could figure, a lot of here and there and maybe not answering us back right away. But now we are working with a very great group that is much better at getting back to us. So we're excited about that communication and we will be having a, a timeline that will emerge in the next couple of weeks that you'll be able to see what you can expect and maybe what it looks like a little bit. That would be really exciting. The skin that was uh, chosen after the long list of things that people really wanted um, it's called Wolf River, which I find it very fitting for our school district. Very excited for what it's going to look like and for you guys to see it. It's uh, pretty exciting. All right. This is a fun one, and I'm really excited to talk to you guys about this. Social media, 
I love, I love it sometimes. I don't love it sometimes, but I'm going to tell you, I have been so enthralled with these numbers and looking at data. I think that numbers don't say everything, but they do say something. So let's take a little bit of a journey back in time, just a little bit. So September 1st of 2021 to June 30th, 2022. So we're not even going to count summer break. All right. We had total visits to our Facebook page, 886. Facebook reach, meaning it showed up on people's timeline, something that someone could see. They didn't click on it, but they saw it, 8,000. Now let's look at last year. Last year's totals were 16,000 total visits, which to me, I mean, look at that number, that's amazing. And then Facebook reach, again, we knocked it out of the park last year. So before we go to the next one, do you guys have any guesses? Just what we've had from September, all the way to today, only today, because we still have the rest of the year to do. Does anybody have any guesses that maybe where we're at? More. <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's look at, let's go ahead and look. Total visits, 26.3 thousand, and our Facebook reach is at 36.6. Now, again, that is a little low, but we are also not done with the year. I'm very excited to see where this goes. <laughs> Um, a lot of that has to do with the kind of posts that we are creating and generating for our community. Um, in the very first year that you saw, we had 86 posts total. That is not a lot. And if you remember within that year, we got someone who joined us and said, hey, let's do more on Facebook. And Superintendent Nichols spearheaded saying, what can we show our community about what we're doing to really make a difference? And I think the numbers show people want to see and they want to hear about what we're doing here. All right. So volunteers. So right now we have a volunteer menu that's up on our website. Um, it is one of the newer things that we've kind of done with uh, utilizing buttons so that you can go straight to Gray Wolf, go to Helen Haller, OPA, et cetera. These are the opportunities that I would say currently we have right now. These are the ones that people have said, yes, we need these immediately. <laughs> these are the help that we need. And I know there's gotta be more, but people maybe don't feel like they can ask. We have so many volunteers. Right now we have uh, 667 and counting. Um, we have a lot of people that go on uh, chaperone trips. So maybe not all of them are volunteers, but those volunteers give hours and a lot of them equal days at the end of the year, which is really exciting because we have retired people who come and they have so much to offer. In fact, we have a fun thing that's coming up and I know that you've kind of gotten a little teaser about it. I have um, someone here with me today. Her name is Teresa Lynn and I was introduced to her this last October and T is what she goes by. She, she let me know, hey, I've got this idea and I don't know where to go with it. And so we sat down and it's been a labor of love, literally nine months. And we are really excited about what we're gonna be launching this month. In fact, next Wednesday. And um, it's going to primarily go for next year, um, but I'm gonna let T kind of explain what, how it started. Board members, Superintendent Nichols, thank you for listening. Uh, this idea, um, it was kind of, it was for a presenter uh, or mentor network, and it came um, up about a year ago. It was during a school board races last spring, and it came about organically at a meeting that of a group that I belong to, and the name of the group is called Ladies in Politics and Squim or LIPS. And um, we're not in politics, but we like to talk about politics and drink wine, not in that order. <laughs> <laughs> we meet once a month in a member's home to talk about politics and drink the wine. It's casual and fun. We have a lot of fun talking about local, state, and U.S. issues. Well, last spring, one of the topics that came up was uh, we were chatting about all the angst surrounding the school district changes, changing uh, Gray Wolf. 2K through two grade, I think, and then holler, Helen holler to three through five. And we didn't understand, most of us being retired people with no children in school, what the parental angst was all about. So I know Marin and I know uh, Patrice uh, Johnston very casually. 
And so I suggested that we invite them to our next meeting and come up with a bunch of questions that we could ask them. And thankfully they came to our meeting. I think it was the wine. <laughs> and uh, they answered all of our questions. And very shortly, we understood the hows and whys of that decision, which was great. And then we got to talking about some other things. And I think uh, uh, Director Johnston brought this up. As she was talking about uh, how wonderful it would be to have models or mentors for students and how much that was needed. And we were talking about how rich SQUIM is with prof uh, professionals and retired people and artisans and skilled technicians. And there just needs to be some sort of a connection, uh, you know, between the two. And um, I was on my third glass of wine sitting next to Reagan. And um, I said, well, I know people. I can create a spreadsheet of people and, you know, and then I'll give it to you and you, maybe you could do something with it. So she said, well, I like that idea. So I did, I created a spreadsheet of all the people that I, you know, thought would be great mentors, groups that a couple groups I belonged to it and people at work who were still working. And then I thought, well, you know, we should, you know, we, we, you could create a little directory. We could present a directory with bios and pictures. And I created a little one, a little mock one. And then Reagan connected me to the wonderful um, Megan. And we met and batted some ideas around and, uh, Megan just kind of took the whole idea and ran with it. And I think that's what she's going to talk to you about next. So thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. It's a fun journey. All right. So what we're going to be presenting to you today, which uh, again, you guys got a little bit of a snippet about it. It's on our website currently right now, um, but it is op the portal for submissions are, are opening next Wednesday at the 15th. And I'm really excited. I've had the pleasure of speaking to many people who have worked from NASA to they are geologists to everything that you can think of under the sun. They live here and they're ready and they would love to be able to give presentations or to get a little bit of a, I don't know, an experiment going for kids. So we're, what we're gonna do is we're making this into a directory that will go to our admin, um, in August. They'll be able to look through it. They'll be able to ask questions. Um, so that side will be, we will solicit all of the information. They will get to look at the directory fully, what people are offering, and then also download uh, different presentations they're willing to do. On the flip side of that, what we really are excited about is um, interacting with those presenters and asking them what they got from it, what they enjoyed about it, and then also seeing if they would be willing to do it again. You know, more and more and more, they're going to have a lot of fun and maybe what didn't work for them so that we can learn on the other side as well. All right. Publications. We have two different uh, folds of this. We have our building newsletters that happen weekly, every Friday, that goes out to all of our families and anybody that is involved with Skyward that have a Skyward account. Our secretaries are amazing. They work very hard. There's 36 publications they put out, give or take a publication. <laughs> And that's a lot of effort on one person or one office that is constantly have phone, phones ringing, constantly having people run in, needing to see the nurse, needing to see an administrator. Uh, there's a lot that goes on. And yet every single week, I see five amazing publications that go out to our families and people are never without information. That is the one thing we learned with COVID is that people wanted information. They wanted it um, timely. And so we thought, hey, every Friday we can do that. So you see the list of all the things that are in any given publication for a Friday newsletter. Then this last uh, winter, one of these amazing ideas came up as, why don't we do a magazine? Why don't we put something together that would not just tell what the day-to-day -day is, but tell a story that's going to be scripted really honestly of every single thing our kids do. And um, for this last, um, two publications that we've done. We, we've also decided to do it four times a year. So we are um, going with winter, spring, summer, and fall. All I got to do is call, you know. All right. So winter 2023, we had 19 stories and 59 pictures inside of that, which I thought was pretty good. And then because I am very competitive, um, I'm competitive with myself, 
um, and with other people, but I try to knock it down a little bit. <laughs> Spring 2024, which was released just a couple months ago or a month ago. Stories, we had 22 and pictures, we had 87 that were inside of that of just unique. None of the kids were the same. These are all amazing stories that are being told, not only of what's happening inside of the classroom, but at extracurricular activities and things our kids are involved in. Lots of initiatives, levy, capital levy project updates, everything like that. So if we go to the next slide, what you're gonna see here is the data of how people are reading and what's happening. So our very first one, I was like, I don't know what this is gonna look like, but we're gonna do this. So our very first one for the first week. So I took first full week and then one month after, because I feel like those are really great benchmarks for us to be able to hold on to. So we can see maybe what, how much it grew within a month. Because the first week, if you release it on a Friday, people might forget about it on the weekend and we have to bump it up a little bit. So our very first one, as you can see there, we had over 11,000 impressions. Now impressions are, it was in front of somebody. They saw that it existed, that was an impression. If they clicked it and they read it, there was 1,300. And the average time for reading was four minutes and two seconds. One month later, as you can see, the impressions really skyrocket. But I was like, okay, so we almost, you know, doubled. Okay, we've got another thousand in there for reads. What can we do better? And so we started collaborating, getting more stories, asking people what kind of stories they wanted. This last time was amazing. I have stories that couldn't make it in the spring one because we just had so many and not enough pages. So this next one for June is going to be bulky and I'm really excited to see what kind of reads we get that with that one. But as you can see, we are bumped up and this went out on a Friday instead of a Wednesday. Winter, it went out right before winter break, but on a Wednesday and then the spring it went out on a Friday, which I wasn't super excited about, but I'm also pretty happy with 5,000 reads. I think that's pretty awesome. I would also like to give a special thank you to my um, to the ongoing generosity to these five groups, the Squim Chamber of Commerce, Squim Gazette, KSQM FM Radio, KONP News Radio, and the Shipley Center. These five partners have been um, instrumental in making sure that we get our stuff out to families, to our community, to anybody who wants to read it. And uh, so that you know, our stuff is read overseas. I'm pretty excited about that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now it could be an aunt or uncle that are living abroad, but I still feel like it's pretty exciting to know that Little Squim is, gonna, is making a big splash in different countries. And I think that's a pretty, pretty cool thing to do. All right, thank you so much. All right, thank you. Do you have any questions for Megan? I just want to comment that I am so um, um, impressed with the way you have reached out to all of these different communities. I mean, on the one hand, there's the parents, there's the staff, all of the folks we normally think of as being involved with the schools, obviously. But to work with T on uh, bringing retired folks into the community as well and making them part of our public schools, to me, is such a great um Great activity and um, kudos to you for working on this and bringing it to um, a place where we actually have these folks involved with the schools. That's super. So thank you. Thank you. I'm very, very excited. Um, also like to just add to it if I could. Um, I've spoken to a lot of different groups also that are just now kind of going, I want to be a part of something. I'm seeing things now. Um, we have a, a veterans group that wants to come in and teach flag etiquette and have a group. And there's about eight of them, I believe that are ready right now to do it. So we're going to wow. obviously add them to that directory because I think that's a really fun class they could teach just in a day if they wanted to. Yeah, thank you. Good stuff. Thank you. Okay. Um, our next report, we have a uh, budget development update. Thank you, President Pickens, directors. The report that Superintendent Nichols and I are bringing before you tonight is really a very 
broad overview of what we've been up to and where we're heading next. So in overview, our problem is that we are financially unsteady and there are funding gap challenges that the district must address. And the immediate actions that we've taken, we've reduced um, the spring 2024 spending, we've had a hiring freeze, and we are engaged in strategic budget development focused on reduced expenditures. And we'll unpack just a little bit of that. But like I said, this is this is the 30,000 foot view of what we've been doing to bring you up to date. As you know, we've had some challenges with enrollment. It's, it's creeping back, but it's not creeping very fast. So that's one of our challenges. We have a challenge of our expenses outpacing our revenues. This is what we brought to you. I believe it was last January, February. We brought this, this to you, so you're aware of that. And our fund balance is something that we're really trying to focus on, making sure that we're making it strong too, so that we can be um, fiscally responsible and develop something that's sustainable and that can outlast. Superintendent Nichols, would you like to speak to this? Sure. So in that introduction, um, we have gotten a, an update to what our projection is, and this is hot off the press, just received today. The good news is this is showing us that our pullback on spending for this spring is working. Okay, so you will see that the green trend line was trending down below that purple, right? But now we are starting to see an uptick. Part of this uptick, of course, is because we just received a considerable apportionment payment. Okay, but Realistically, if we can continue this trend, we will end up with a fund balance that will be higher than we had considered because um, we thought we'd come in under that blue line. Do I think we're going to get to 4% at the end of the year? I don't. But I do think that we're going to be better positioned than we were just by making these decisions around discretionary spending. And I also have to say a thank you to our administrative team and our schools, because there have been times where they've had to go without discretionary spending wise, and they're making it. Also, we've had situations where we haven't hired positions this spring because we're trying to make it. And right now, Erin Fox, who's had to leave to go to her um, eighth grade family night, um, is covering athletic director duties, no small feat. Uh, this is a job that is, in addition to her principal job, it is helping our financial position, of course, but it's a lot to ask. So there are sacrifices that have been made along the way in order to get this result, okay? But good news on the financial front. Thank you. And as we face our challenges, we do keep in mind a framework of priorities we prioritize services to students. We prioritize having a supportive workplace. We prioritize fiscal sustainability, and we are targeting a $2.5 million reduction. Do you want to? Yes, I'd like to speak to this. Um, earlier this uh, winter, you heard me speak about a $2.3 million reduction target. And the reason that this target has increased is because we've had continual decreased enrollment each month. So every time you have the decrease in enrollment, you are decreasing the apportionment you're receiving that we were counting on to get to our projection. So I have been monitoring that with Darlene and we've been making the adjustments so that we are targeting the best reduction to get us to a 4%, maybe 4.5%, no promises, hmm. uh, fun balance. Uh, as we end 2025, not this year. So we're looking ahead. Uh, we'll be making the decisions around how we structure um, all the expenses that we bring on board so that we're guaranteeing that 4% is going to be an outcome. The word guarantee is a tough one, and I'll tell you why. For a system to take this degree of commitment to get back from where we were to 4%, is very strong in one year. And I do believe it's possible 
with the fact that the state legislature had some bump ups in particular apportionment reimbursement that will come. So we're looking at that amount that we think will come online. I'm going to tell you it's minuscule, but when you're aiming for the difference between 4% and 3.8, you can make it on dollars like that. So we're looking at every dime we can. Do you have questions about that or questions about the fund balance um, and the projection you just saw? Well, the fund balance question is one I'm always asking. Mm -hmm. And uh, I really appreciate the efforts to uh, prioritize getting our fund balance to 4% minimum and mm -hmm. making that a, um, well, it's not exactly in cement, but more mm -hmm. so where this is, for sustainability and for our economic health, I think it's important to keep that 4% and maybe higher, but right now with our given condition, if we can make our 4%, that's great. And I appreciate the effort. You bet. There are several reasons to do it, which are just practical reasons I've gone over before with you. But one thing I just want to say again and again is we are becoming a system that is seeking grants. And when you seek grants, you have to front the money. So you've got to have a fund balance that allows the cash flow while you're expending so that you can do the grant acquisition the next month. And if we are sitting at 4%, we're better slated to be able to handle some of that. But really, we're going to have to be headed higher so that if this grant culture continues for schools, which is what I see on the horizon, competitive money. Uh, we need to have a strong position to be able to access it. So we have some solutions up here. First thing we're doing is we are embracing attrition. We will not be filling many of the positions that we've identified through attrition this year. We are re-envisioning our budgeting process. The district has worked with principals to develop a strong educational program that supports students and staff. And I, I personally am incredibly impressed by what I've seen our principals do. The very, very hard work, the very thoughtful work that they put into developing uh, educational services that will serve our students and meet the needs of our staff and meet the needs of our budget. Did you want to say more about that? I, I can't say enough. Um, each of our principals and directors was given a target for which they needed to um, find reduction. Those targets were all proportional based on the current funding status of our buildings as they are right now, and also their staffing status. So taking those types of combined uh, targets, I think that there was just amazing commitment that our organizational health needed to be so strong that as you move from one school to another, you could be guaranteed that you were going to have an environment that could work. And so I've seen principals work together to make decisions about how resources can even be shared, um, how reductions in one place could emphasize one type of um, priority and then in another school, a different priority, because that makes sense. So attrition, once again, I must also say thank you to all of the employees who let us know their plans early. That has greatly helped us. And so um, we will not need to be coming with a reduction in force for certificated this year due to all of those combined efforts. So real team effort. Yeah. And we're moving forward with a very strong awareness of our, of our funding gap. We say here, recognizing state apportionment levels continue to decline in, well, in enrollment from previous years and the increasing costs associated with competitive salaries that we are honored to pay um, and operating costs. The district is being realistic about our future capacity for sustainability. Oops. I got a little, it got a little click happy. So uh, the outcome, significant certificated resignations and retirements coupled with leave replacement contracts that were issued during this school year means that the Squim School District is within reach of meeting our 2.5 million reduction target when coupled with additional district 
department and programmatic reductions. So we're coming to you tonight with uh, layer one. Uh, I don't want to say anything is finished because our budget is not due until August, but we feel confident that we've um, been very nimble with the attrition that's occurred. And so we can uh, facilitate strong programming going forward. The next layer will involve our departments looking at each of their budgets. We're looking at discretionary spending for next year. And then we will need to be looking at classified staffing as well and proportionally against what we are being funded uh, for those positions. I will tell you state funding wise, um, of course, there was a bit of a bump up in some classified staffing, but what it out, what the outcome is for Squim School District is quite low. So we will continue to study that and get um, as far as we can, um, but we will be having to evaluate that next layer and we'll be back to you about that. Thank you, Superintendent Nichols. I think you covered our last slide beautifully. And so our next step is we're gonna continue to monitor our fiscal health. We're currently assessing our classified staffing as Superintendent Nichols said. We are going to continue to embrace the attrition that comes to us that way, re-envisioning our services, realistic budgeting, prioritizing services to students, and maintaining supportive workspace sp and fiscal sustainability. That is our 30,000 foot view of what we're doing with the budget these days. So we'd be happy to take any questions and um, we've got to, uh, a few administrators here in the room who have been in this process with us. And so uh, certainly there are many of us that can speak to it. Questions? Not, not a question, but you know, anytime we have this kind of budget crunch reduction, it's very stressful on everybody and some really hard choices are gonna have to be made to accomplish what, what you uh, set out to do here. Um, I mean, we had teacher appreciation week and we had the nurse appreciation. I mean, we, in spite of our budget constraint, we have some really fantastic people doing some really fantastic things. However, um, this budget crunch is going to, um, going to um, put stress on everybody until it, works its way out and we see what it all comes to. And I look forward to a time when we, our numbers are up and I'm not too hopeful the state will come up with enough money to fund some of the things they um, have said they are priorities, but don't, haven't really funded uh, it in a while. It's unfortunate it does come down to money. Sometimes it just, we have enough money to do this or that. And if the answer is no, there's some real tough choices that need to be made. And I appreciate all the work that you and the administrative staff and the teachers and will be doing and then the understanding of the um, community. Um, I do appreciate or uh, getting the news out, maybe not in kaleidoscope, <clears throat> but getting the realities of our numbers out there to the public so that they know this is how much money we have and this is what it costs, so what are we gonna do? So I appreciate your efforts. <clears throat> well, I'd like to uh, say that our administrative team has uh, moved out uh, to be able to communicate with folks who may be impacted in any way. You know, there are those who are impacted because they have chosen to resign or retire. There are those who are impacted because they may have predicted that there would be a certain staffing level in a building, and we've had to adjust the number of sections of things, whether that's a grade span or, or a course. Um, but there are different ways that we can be flexible in offering things. So although you are reducing you are still finding a way to provide some level of service, albeit maybe it's different how it comes, what package it comes in, it still is an opportunity for the students. So I think that's been exactly what Victoria shared, the priority, keeping student opportunities alive. And the creativity of our team has made that happen. It's uh, actually remarkable. 
but I don't want to say things won't be different. I mean, that's just not fair. It's, it's a challenge. Other questions? Any administrators out there who'd like to share anything about the process or impacts? One, and maybe if administrators want to want to address this, I guess one one question I have as we think about the the needs that I mean, obviously there's a lot of student needs out there, and I know the next step is going to be evaluating classified staff and that sort of thing. Are are there certain steps that we're taking to to try to um, try to ensure that the uh, that we're still going to be have all the resources specifically to address the the student needs that are out there because I can I know you talked more about like opportunities that look different but I'm also thinking about behaviors and and that sort of thing and with reductions it's like okay well we know that the the behaviors are are out there the needs are out there and um but you know, the well, idea of doing less. I can answer that easily. Okay. The answer is yes. Um, our administrative team members have all uh, had an opportunity to discuss what elements need to go into their building program to make it as responsive as possible to behavior needs. Mm -hmm. And so we have looked at each building. Um, principals have weighed in about what components need to happen. We're working both with special education and title and lap so that we can have uh, systems that are in place and very responsive. We've got some creative ideas going on in individual schools about the way staffing can occur to be responsive to the developmental level. So I think we'll start the school year with very strong and supportive programming. You know, when you reduce Yes, it is reduction, meaning less of something, but you also prioritize at the same time. So if there's something that you really do want to spend your money on, you do that and you let go of something different. And that's exactly what we're doing. Great. I think. All right. Excellent. Thank you for asking. Yeah. Okay. Mm. <laughs> Anything else on budget development update? Or move on? We're working really hard, um, and I feel in a situation that's this hard, it feels like we've had amazing productivity around it. Great. Okay. Next superintendent report. You know, I, I'm happy to give my report. I'm wondering if, Ariana, if you have a report you'd like to give before oh, I go. Yeah. You, yeah. yeah. Hello. Hello. Sorry. Um, good evening, everyone. I hope you're all well. I apologize for my tardiness. It's okay. Um, uh, May is a very busy month for the Squim High School students. Many students are, are busy studying and prepping for upcoming tests. On another hand, the Squim High School Operetta Club had their first showing of the Adams Family this weekend, and they did amazing. Um, they will also be performing again this weekend on from Thursday through Saturday at 7 p.m. I highly recommend and encourage you all to go. Um, that's it. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Well, I will concur with Ariana's report, and I'm sending down the program for the Adams Family Operetta. Um, I also attended this weekend. It was absolutely fantastic. And it was so engaging. I just found myself smiling and laughing the whole time. Um, but the talent is with a capital T. And I watched some students perform who I interact with um, on a weekly basis. And I had no idea that that was one of their passions. So it's exciting what our students are able to show. And I hope you can enjoy it too. Okay, as you're uh, looking that over, I'll just go ahead and start on some other things. I want to give an update about driver's education. Um, on May 1st, OSPI did release a bulletin regarding uh, applications for driver's education programs. Uh, the situation is that Squim School District is not at a place where we are ready to complete the application because there is another level of readiness you need to have around certifications. And we still are awaiting the information about how those certification programs will occur. 
So we'll be knocking on those doors again because we've started that communication, but I wanted you to know a next step has taken shape and we will start to um, engage with this application. And when we do have readiness, we will um, put that in. I'd uh, like to let you know that uh, we have had a conversation between myself and city manager Hewish regarding a joint school board and city council meeting. Uh, we do need to uh, think about a date that would be reasonable for everyone to gather. So if you would be able to send some ideas around Mondays and what you see as viable Monday opportunities for you in either late May going into June, um, that would be helpful. If May and June are not looking like they'd work on your calendar, uh, certainly we can look into July as well. But I think um, what would be the goal? I think right now we have some exciting things happening in both entities. You have comprehensive planning going on in the city of Squim. You have uh, strategic planning that still is coming together here. And also we know we have a long range facilities planning group coming together to make a long range facilities plan. So the interactions between both board and the council makes a lot of sense at this juncture. So we're all on the same page and we can understand what growth we'll be seeing, what priorities both entities have and where we have the shared interests. So more to come on that. I uh, just would like to let you know that um, a few of us attended the WASA Awards where we did bring forth our CTE work group representatives. And it was a great evening of celebration of so much work in communities in our region, ESD 114. Um, we were just one group of many. There are over a hundred people in the room. So um, I'd like to say thank you to those who could attend and certainly a thank you to our CTE work group because they'll be firing back up as we move out on plans for the local community project of the CTE Center for Excellence. And speaking of that, I was invited to the North Peninsula Building Association meeting. Uh, they wanted to talk about CTE as well. They're interested in ways that they can partner with us to promote CTE, maybe even earlier than uh, high school or middle school. So I will be talking with uh, team members around that. They also are interested in their scholarship and seeing what level of promotion the school district might be able to give toward that because it's challenging to get applicants for it. And we find this with some other scholarships too. Students are busy. Um, applying for scholarships is right in the middle of a lot of other priorities for them. So we're talking about ways that we might be able to help them get a different stream of student aware and uh, ready to apply. Um, also, we discussed the uh, home show and the connection that they have uh, here on our campus and interests in utilizing our uh, campuses. We did have them run the home show out of the middle school last year. And they have requested that we come together to talk more to see if they can get back into the high school. And a fundamental uh, question around that will be the gym floor and our ability to protect it well and make sure that um, we don't have any damage from a, a big event. And they are 100% in agreement. They would like to help support that priority. So I think it will be a productive meeting and certainly a productive partnership moving forward. Uh, I'd like to let you know that I attended the Albert Haller Foundation lunch uh, earlier this month. I also sat on their scholarship selection board. And so there are uh, several schools in our region that will receive scholarship uh, money to individual students, SQUIM being one. And so I'd just like to thank them for their support of our students. And those will be announced on our scholarship night. Uh, we did have a West Sound STEM quarterly leadership meeting, and that happened at Peninsula College. And why that's important is that West Sound STEM is really the regional hub for CTE programming across the region, priorities, funding. And there was a very interesting presentation by the Economic Development Council about the workforce needs right now. And just in registered nursing alone, 83 openings at OMC. 
66 openings at Caldera Care. And then the list just went on all the smaller entities in our peninsula that need this uh, level of service. And then many other professions that were discussed at the North Peninsula Builders Association. It was definitely discussed the need for certain labor, uh, electricians, plumbers, welders. So we're going to continue moving forward because I think the CTE Center of Excellence working with Peninsula College will lead to uh, a lot of opportunity for students and adults wanting to have workforce training. Um, our middle school band is going to be in the parade this weekend. And I just wanna let you know that. So if you're out, uh, definitely listen for them because they'll be playing strong and it'll be an exciting time. And then speaking of students, we have the eighth grade parent night tonight at six. We have the uh, fifth graders entering the middle school, having an evening on the 16th. That's it, 16th at six. And I really encourage you to check those evenings out if you'd like to know more about um, how we are helping students to assimilate into their next school. Uh, and we appreciate those. And then I'd like to uh, give a shout out to the Haller Elementary uh, Math Night. So as you made your way through math night, you went into classrooms and there were games out where the parents could play with the students. And I saw so much interaction, teachers up front facilitating games or beside desks, helping students understand the rules. Um, so much going on around the richness of what math can be. And I have to say, I am Definitely believing that this year you're going to see some exciting math scores. Um, I think there are kids very confident about math. I um, saw it that night teaching their parents, parents really interested, and they could take all of those things home. So very well organized night, and that follows the STEM night. So it, good opportunities for kids going on. So um, that concludes my, my report, and I'm really excited for what the spring is bringing. Thank you. Any questions? Okay. It's going to bring us to our board business. So we have a first reading and approval of policy 6550, capitalization threshold for leases and subscription based information technology arrangements. So this policy is one that is recommended um, as we uh, move forward for capitalization or making sure that significant subscriptions that our district may encounter, which I don't think we have a subscription level need right now, but the capitalization threshold will be at 1% um, of our total budget expenditure. And um, the audit that has been going on um, has given a thumbs up to this approach. We have a uh, motion. I move, we move, I move, we forward policy 6550, capitalization threshold for leases and subscription-based information technology arrangements to a second reading. My second. Okay. Any discussion? Would you care to cast a, an advisory vote on this one? Okay. Are all in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Motion passed. It's going to bring us to a uh, resolution for Swim Middle School uh, fire alarm pin. So uh, we have Chris Marfori with us, and he's going to fill you in on the details. Assuming I get the uh, microphone to work. Um, seeing as we're pushing on time, I will be respectful and get jump, jump right into it. We have two resolutions that we would like to put in front of the board. As you know, capital projects and uh, the management of the levy has required us to be aware of as things are changing and the demands and needs of the schools are going on. And we're putting these two resolutions uh, on projects that were not originally anticipated in the uh, the levy. The first is 
uh, resolution 08, which is Squim Middle School's fire alarm. Um, in the assessments that have been going on with the District 3 Fire Department, as well as with uh, um, you know continued evaluation of these facilities, the fire alarm panel for Squim Middle School is deteriorating. Um, and as it's deteriorated, it has been identified that it is now delisted and, dere and, and no longer produced. And so it's necessitated a reevaluation for Squim Middle School as a fire alarm replacement project uh, as added adding it to the capital projects levy. Uh, so this resolution is being asked to pursue uh, pricing to actually look at what this project would would uh, mandate and hope of actually looking towards a project potentially this summer. Okay, any questions? All right, do we have a motion? I move that we approve resolution 8 2023 2024 for SMS fire alarm panel. Okay. I'll second. Okay. Any discussion? Advisory vote? No. Uh, all in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Motion passes. Next, we have the um, resolution for stadium lighting. Now, as you're aware, this summer, with the uh, the resurfacing and rework of the track is going underway starting in June. Uh, as we started to evaluate the secondary services that work around the track, the one thing that was identified is that the squim lighting, uh, squim stadium lighting, um, is uh, in need of repair to be up to standards to be able to use during the evenings. Um, um, and we expect a lot further use to come from it once it's resurfaced. Uh, when we started reevaluating the cost of the metal halide fixtures that are currently up there, one are energy inefficient. Uh, they're obsolete in, by current standard and actually no longer allowed by current energy codes. And so we, we, we are requesting approval to pursue adding or pricing for the stadium lighting as an add to uh, the track replacement uh, and resurfacing project in order to provide appropriate lighting for the, both the field as well as the track with its uh, expect anticipated increased use. Uh, as the adjusted motion, um, we because this was a of, a of an anticipated value, roughly around $100,000, we put this out to the small works roster, which has very little um, or reduced requirements for particip uh, for participation to an, a pre-approved list. Uh, that bid was actually due today, and hence the late request to ask for this to be added to it. We found uh, we actually anticipated only one or two bids to be required by the policy for small works rosters. The school district requires that the this be procured. Uh, we procure five quotes. We ended up receiving six. Uh, four are equivalent. Um, one is actually above and beyond the scope that was requested to be part of the project, which is just a direct replacement of the light fixtures, the infrastructure, and anything above and beyond that would be looked at at a later date when the facility did had a, a larger upgrade. Um, of that, a local company, Discovery Bay Electric, was the lowest uh, apparent lowest bidder uh, for a complete scope of work at $87,000. So the secondary request is uh, contingent um, pending further review to make sure that these numbers are accurate and that it is in compliance with the scope of work that we have a contingent approval to pursue issuance of award if the uh, project is added to the capital projects levy. Okay. So again, that last piece that was just reviewed is that part that was amended with the uh, with the contingent contract approval as an additional piece of it. Is that, is that right, Chris? That's correct. Yes. Okay. Um, do we have a motion? I move that we approve board resolution for stadium lighting. Okay. I'll second. Okay. Discussion. Advisory board. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All right. Motion passes. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. Okay. And that's going to uh, 
we bring us to a close on our board business and anything else? No. Okay. We will go ahead and adjourn for the evening. Thank you.